All right. So here's um, here's a thing that every developer uh, starts their programming journeys with. We all like to say hello. And we all like to say hello to the world as the very first thing that we do uh, in our programs. And, um, you know, almost everyone starts their journey that way. Um, and in fact, the time it takes for someone to say hello world in a specific programming environment um, may be the determining factor if they're going to continue their journey um, in that platform or not. So I definitely want you guys to stick around for the rest of the presentation, the rest of the talk. Um, so I'll just get started uh, with the hello world part. All right, so what do we have here? Um, as Paul mentioned, I am the founder of usorabon.app, which is this tool that you see right here. Um, it is a developer playground for Sorabon smart contracts. Now, what do we see on screen exactly? Uh, well, I'm logged in, um, so um, I have access to, to the gated alpha here. And I have the ability to create a new project. So let's go ahead and do that. New project pops up and let's go ahead and delete everything because we're going to start from scratch. So what's this environment all about? Well, first, uh, we have a code editor to the left here. This is where we'll just put our Rust slash Soraban. Uh, this playground uh, runs on Rust and the Rust Soraban SDK. Uh, you'll, as you continue your journey, um, you'll find out that there's other SDKs for Soraban available. For now, uh, we're going to deal with Rust because that's the sort of reference implementation. All right, so we have the code editor. We'll we'll, we'll put our Rust in in Soraban, um, and then. We have some widgets. So right now, console is open, code is open, and let's get started with the hello world part. So how do we do that in Rust? Well, I guess we write a hello function, and uh, we call the print line macro and say hello. Okay. Compile it, and that worked. Um, this is a Rust program, uh, as it should be compiled and um, I abstract all the details for creating cargo projects and um, de defining targets and so forth. So you just sort of write some code and click compile and you know, you're know you off to the races. Carrying on. So print line, uh, hello, didn't work. Well, at least it compiled and didn't produce what we wanted. Um, why is the question. And well, we're working in a Sorbonne environment, right? Sorbonne expects a certain kind of um, format for these things to work. And everything that um, we want to be able to call has to live in a contract. So uh, contracts are structs in Rust. So we're going to declare contract uh, struct. This name can be anything you want. Um, I'm going to call it contract because it couldn't come up with a better name. All right, so we go ahead and define an implementation for contract. Let's go ahead and copy this function here. Okay. All right, compile this again. Now that worked, uh, again, no, no compiler errors. Um, but the problem is we still don't see any hellos popping up. Um, so that's not great. Um, ideally, uh, you want to work with uh, the SDK here because, um, you know, a, a structure like this is not really Soraban. Um, we got to tell it uh, to do a little bit more. So for that, we're going to use the Soraban SDK. And we're going to import the contract implementation macro. And that's going to do uh, a bunch of things. But essentially, this will convert this implementation right here into a Soraban contract. And uh, OK, we have a, a, a few errors over here. Um, by the way, Rust is super famous for really good compiler errors. And in this environment, uh, which is enabled by Soraban, the way it's designed to leverage WebAssembly and, um, and Rust, so we'll get those beautiful Rust compiler errors. And we can see that there's some problems with the 
panic implementation, although it's not entirely clear what's going on. Uh, so I'll just sort of uh, skip the mystery here and um, solve this problem by finding this macro right here. So contracts on the blockchain have to be super, super efficient in how they use the uh, available ledger uh, uh, space. And uh, REST programs, even though they're pretty light, um, they still carry a bunch of stuff that we don't really need uh, as part of our contracts. So to eliminate everything that we don't need um, and just get the rest that, you know, the basic rest that, that is required for contract uh, logic, well, we declare um, the no STD macro. This, um, unfortunately, um, removes the ability for us to use the print line macro to print this stuff. And, uh, okay, so let's get rid of that. Now we've uh, back to uh, a solid compiling contract here. And let's go ahead and declare this function as a public function. Now we have something on, on, on screen up here uh, that's uh, looking like a button. So in this uh, actions widget, uh, which is sort of the, a third of this uh, interface in the middle is where you will be able to click and interact with every function that your contract declares. So our contract right here declares a single hello function. We can call it and we'll see in the console a return value. So it's implied that a function without a, uh, an explicit return value returns none in Rust. So same applies here. And we're gonna return value null. Um, I guess we can leverage this return dynamic to finally say hello to uh, everyone tuning in. And for that, we will need a special type. So again, since we can't use the rest string, um, it's unavailable. Uh, we have to figure um, a, a different way to carry our information. And for that, we're gonna use a symbol, which is an efficient data type um, in, in Soroban for storing alphanumeric uh, characters, uh, essentially all the letters of the alphabet plus the digits and the underscore. So what we're gonna do with symbol is we're gonna initialize a short symbol it says hello. And short just means that this sequence of uh, characters will be able to fit in a single 64-bit um, value, which is pretty important um, um, when it comes to this, this uh, context. Let's recompile this again. And uh, oh, thank you, Rust uh, compiler. We are returning a value. So let's uh, make sure that we declare what we're returning. And let's call this. All right, so we have a return value hello um, from this function right here. And um, this is sort of your basic, most basic implementation of a Soroban contract that says hello to anyone uh, tuning in. Now, let's make it a little bit more spicy. Um, and let's use uh, a little bit more of the environment here. So let's say, we're going to log a value. Um, everybody loves logging. As a you know, someone coming in from a web developer background, I use console log all the time, and console log is uh, the best. So we have an equivalent in Soroban. It's called log, the log macro. And we're going to declare a new function called hello2. And what are we going to do here? We're going to. Uh, going to say hello to a specific name that's going to be a symbol and we're not going to return anything okay so how do we interact with this log macro um well it's a macro so we use a bang and then the first argument is the environment within which we're logging this value and uh you'll get used to this concept of every single function that your contract has that interacts with Anything else, anything in the outside world, we'll have to have environment as the very first argument. It's kind of like your access to everything. So log accepts the first argument um, being the environment. So we're just going to pass in a reference to the environment. Next up, we have a string. And we're going to use hello, bang, and then we're going to provide the name. Let's compile this. 
Uh, oh, we're missing environment in, in this import. And a handy feature is if you're having problems with a specific um, type or you're missing something, you can go ahead and click um, links right inside of your compiler uh, widget that will take you to the documentation. So it's an easy feedback loop. So now that we've imported an environment, we can recompile this again and try saying hello to Twitch, I guess, is where most of you are. Um, and in this console widget, we can see that in between hello to, which is the function that we're calling, and the return value, we have a log that says hello Twitch. All right, so I'm almost done with the first demo. Anyone and everyone that's tuning in, you can actually test this on your phone. Um, so this is going to be a multimodal demo. And um, for that, I'm going to take my phone here. So I just popped up this uh, share modal. I'm going to take my phone. This is an actual phone I have here. Bring up the camera. Hey, everyone. And I'll go ahead and look at the QR code here. Tap on usoraban.app. And we can see we're taken to a uh, version of usoraban.app, which is mobile um, optimized. And, you know, we got to work on mobile experiences just as much as a desktop experience and someone that's designing these apps. we got to be mindful that that's where our audience is. So this kind of interface will allow users to test this contract anywhere they are, especially on the mobile phone. So we have access to the same sort of widgets. We have the console open and actions is a sheet down at the bottom. We can go ahead and call hello like we did before. Quick access down at the bottom to the previously called functions. And we can call hello to, and let's do Twitch. Confirm. And then we can call this function with the same arguments if we want to, or we can change the arguments um, and do YouTube. Okay. 